Right, this is key points. I remember you can join us via WhatsApp at 020-216-6633 and post your comments on our Facebook uh, pages as well. I did tell you that uh, this week has been pretty eventful and key among them is uh, Shatawale and Stoneboy Brawl, the brawl which uh, actually uh, uh, marred the 20th edition of the Vodafone Ghana Music Awards uh, the 20th edition and uh, following from that a decision has been made by the board to ban the two artists the two arch rivals actually indefinitely from the show also the special prosecutor is beginning to prosecute <coughs> and he has started by hauling uh, Mahama Yariga the Boko Central MP to court over tax evasion charges also uh, this week uh, Manya Krobo residents clashed with police and PDS and when PDS went into the community to retrieve or collect debt owed uh, by the residents. It resulted in one person dying and uh, following uh, from that incident and the violence that erupted, the PRC and the PDS and uh, the MP as well as uh, opinion leaders met and there being a 12-point uh, roadmap to restore peace to the community. So this morning I have with me uh, quickly introduce uh, my guest uh, to my very extreme left. I have Francis Doku. Francis is general manager, MG Digital and Radio here. He's also a board member of the VGMA. And then I have um, uh, Bernard Oredu next to him. He's a legal practitioner. And then on my, my right, I have um, Arnold Asamoa Beidou, who is an entertainment analyst. And I have uh, Nia Ite Hammond. Nia Ite Hammond is, uh, is a board member of VGMA as well. I'm Stephen Enti, and uh, let's uh, quickly start. Let me start with you. Um, Francis, I like starting with you. <laughs> the, before the announcement by the VGMA to place an indefinite ban on Shatawale and Stoneboy, Shatawale himself had gone on uh, social media to uh, say that he was pulling out of all the events, uh, which I, I feel that was a way of dampening the effect that the, uh, the VGMA board announcement will have on him but looking at all that have happened do you get the sense that this is not too harsh Sarkodie believes that this is too harsh isn't it well thank you uh, Steve I I think that um, a lot of people put a huge premium and if you like capital on the voter from Ghana Music Awards many musicians look towards it every year that okay for all that we've gained in music people enjoying our music, making money from it and all that. There's one night on which the entire industry comes together to honor us. And, and that's to, the VGMA. You know, and that's the VGMA. And so in the view of the board and many, I believe, um, Ghanaians and people within the industry, if these two people have, you know, um, whether intentional or not, uh, brought the name of the of the of the scheme that many look forward to into such a disrepute, then there's a need to not just look on, you know. Um, there's a need to make take some action so the two will realize what they've done, and then also maybe serve as deterrent to other people. So, from that point, and I believe that the board, having discussed all this and have conversations and discussions with stakeholders, felt this was adequate enough you know punishment for what happened. I know as a board member you wouldn't you wouldn't ever tell me that uh, you feel that this is harsh or punitive enough all all of that but can you guess that can you tell me whether in the board's view this is it this was a uh, appropriate punishment or you would say you went overboard a little bit too harsh uh, but no I think that we we had enough time I mean you you you'd, uh, note that the announcement was made on Thursday uh, this happened in the early hours on uh, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday. And so a lot of, you know, discussions have been had. We looked at all the possible, you know, issues and discussed all manner of, you know, possible uh, punitive measures and arrived at this. Um, so in the view of the board, this is adequate. And so as a member of the board, and I stand by the decision that the board made, I think that this is okay. Now, after... You know, the, the announcement was made. There have been different views from different people who felt that um, it was a bit harsh. Unfortunately, people saying that haven't suggested any other way by which this can be done. We felt that to send a message out in the manner uh, of what happened and for the two gentlemen to recognize, mm. 
regardless of what's happening in the court, I mean, that's a different yeah. issue happening, and which I, I believe we'll talk about a lawyer he's here to advise mm -hmm. also on. The scheme itself need to let the public know and the two gentlemen also be aware that they cannot um, bring something that people have in invested so much into for a long time, 20 years, 20 into years. such a uh, distribution. Mm -hmm. So, again, I, I, I think that what decision the board took was adequate enough for what happened on the night. And Arnold, uh, do, you, do you share his view that the decision is adequate enough? I saw you reading some terms and conditions. No, 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 uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'm asleep. I mean, um, it, it was expected that the two guys would, would face some, some level of sanctions. I mean, the rules are clear that if you're an artist or you are related to the awards in any way and then you plunge the awards in some, some form of chaos or, or mayhem, you would be sanctioned. Yes, yeah, so it was expected that the two guys would face some sanctions. But for me, I think the sort of sanction, um, the kind of sanction uh, as, as, as meted out to these guys, for me, I think it's, 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 it's too extreme. It's, it's, too it's extreme. harsh. Mm, it's harsh. harsh. It's severe. Right. So yes. I'm going to task yeah. you to tell me what alternative yes. do you think the VGMA board could have put in place? Because like Francis yeah. said, mm -hmm. those who are suggesting that this punishment is too harsh mm -hmm. are not bringing forward any alternatives. Yeah, we are. Then my brother is not listening hard enough because some of us who are really agitating over, over the outcome or over the decision, we've, we've been suggesting ways the board could have gone with regards to the sanctions. So probably he should, no, he has big years. So tell me should, uh, should. some of the ways you think the board I could mean, have uh, softened the impact of this. You see, the issue is the ban was expected. Mm. However, we expected a duration or a time frame to the ban. For example, I mean, indefinite for me, I'm I think it's... Come again. I'm saying it's indefinite, so probably they can oh, we, call in tomorrow. Boss, you're a lawyer, so it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You can you can spend it in your own language. But we we, we we do not understand the indefinite. The indefinite we for us it means you are saying tomorrow, but clearly there's there's been a precedent. You understand. We also have gone through processes where indefinite ban have been leveled at individuals. We know how it goes. So if you want to put the English spin or the English language spin there, then even today they can they can revert and say exactly. But we are not looking at it at it at that point. You see, who are we? Oh, followers <laughs> of the awards, <laughs> stakeholders. <laughs> you get like it. fans, like fans as well. Parties. You understand? Yeah. Mm. So for me, I felt the ban, yes, but the extent which the ban was leveled for me, I think was 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 excessive because, boss, if you look at the terms and, terms and condition, I mean that the the I don't know the, the the word to use for it, but the statement that was used to to ban, for me, I think it's it's lacks clarity, specification, and like explanation. Because you leave it blank. And I was thinking, that's a problem with, with the VGMA and its board. Because if you have, you have a system, you have a structure where you have punitive measures, there should be some level of clarity. For example, if you, do this, this, if you go through this misdemeanor, this is a punitive measure you would get. Whether it's a number of days, you, you understand what I'm saying? The, 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 the action and its punitive measures. the explanations we've heard from the yes. VGMA suggest that it was necessary to simplify the language and text because of the kind of uh, clientele they have, musicians and their fans. They don't have too much time to read. Uh, no, but huge, that's 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 uh, over, but that's a problem because the the, the award is twenty years. You understand, and it's about time that we we improve upon its its procedures and its systems. For, so if you tell me that they did not have the, that time to actually sit and go through, because this is a critical decision mm. that may affect the two artists and, and, and their respective careers. Yeah. And so, I mean, time, you need time. You know, you need a lot of, of consultation, you understand, to come to this decision, because it's a very critical one. Mm. And so if you tell me that, oh, because there's no time, I will not buy it, because it's been 20 years. I mean, we all watch football. Yeah. I mean, just forgive my comparison, but even in, the, in, in England, the FA have, 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 have rules and rules, regulations. Yeah. They have punitive measures to whatever misdemeanor or whatever actions. They stick, by, they stick, they by, stick by it. They, and, and there and are no instances where people raise doubts and questions about because, clarity be, issues. Yes, because, because, because there's, 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 an, there's some level of understanding with the rules that if you do this, this is a number of days you would, you, you would face. If you do this, this is the fine you would get. You understand? So I do not need to go and ask the board or come and argue with you as to why did you give this punitive measure to this action? Because on paper, they, they, there's clarity to, to, to the actions, you understand? So for me, that's the problem. And President tells us that, okay, so in 2014, you ban the same Shatawali for a certain action, probably going out there and denigrating the board and its yeah. members and all. And bringing that scheme into, into some level of dispute. What, what punishment was meted out to him? 
indefinite ban. You understand? So the precedent is there. So if two other artists have, you know, again, done virtually the same thing, the punishment is different. So if I sit here, I'm like, okay, so on what basis did you level that le kind of punishment to Shatawali in 2014? And under what basis are you leveling this kind of punishment to these artists? Again, if you consider the actions of Stonewall and Shatawali, two different actions, but the same results. So clearly, you know, the rules, the, 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 the terms and conditions and the code of conduct lack, lack some, some level of clarity. Mr. Redu, uh, you, you, I, I've noticed that you wanted to make a comment yes, on uh, some of his references to rules, yes, etc. Yes, I was of the view that, you see, the organizers have this question. Yeah. You talk about um, rules and regulations mm -hmm. concerning this whole program. I think it's the first time somebody tried to go on stage and probably do whatever Shatawale and Stoneboy had in this scheme. In this yes. scheme yeah. So probably and point a gun. Um, yeah, they never anticipated such things. But we all learn. So going forward, they know some of these things could happen. Mm -hmm. But every organizer has this question. Okay. I am the organizer. If I tell you that, okay, because of A, B, and C, I'm not going to let you be part of my uh, program again. I have the right to do so. But you see, my issue and where I side with you is, they don't have specific, clear, defined rules. So for instance, if they had probably come out with the rules governing this whole scheme, I would have known that, OK, if such a decision is taken, this is my appellate procedure. This is the appellate avenue. Because now that the decision has been taken, we don't know the next level for the two artists. Mm -hmm. can, for it, whether they can appeal Whether they can even or, appeal or, or probably seek further redress as to their current circumstances. So what I would advise and where I, I will go with them is that in, in, it's, it's such a big event, and it's for 20 years. So at least come with specific rules, come with specific regulations, that these are the rules binding, these are the regulations. If you do A, B, and C, this is what's going to happen to you. If you are agreed by the decision of the board, this is the next level for you. Because you see, for rules and regulations, one very important aspect is clarity, and letting the person know that I am going through this particular situation because of A, B, and C. If the person knows that, at least he, is, he has a foreknowledge of what could befall him if he should go contrary to whatever provisions have been made. So my issue with the, 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 the use of their discretion as organizers is that at least in their decision, they could have said that, okay, if Stoneboy, Shatter are grieved by such decision, this is what they could do. This, these are the procedures they could follow. Because once you are banning somebody, you have used your discretion. And you see, the constitution, and joins on everybody who has to use this question. It's, it's supposed to be candid. They don't, you're supposed to use it fair. So I am of the view that once they have taken the decision to ban them, they should have given them some opportunity, an appellate opportunity, or at least a, 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 a window of escape or something. Because you see, for me, I, I, I love music. I follow the two artists. I do I, also. Yes, I, I, I do. And I think everybody does. Yes, and for me, when the issue happened, I said to myself, okay, this is a big opportunity for Chatterhouse to bring Stoneboy and Chatterwally together. Because you see, everybody is expecting that, hey, hey, hey. Then you call them and tell them that, because truth to tell, these two artists have really pushed Ghana music. I mean, they've really pushed Ghana music. Sometimes you don't need to treat people just as they deserve. But you need to be a bit uh, 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 soft because of certain circumstances. Because that is why we even say in law, we temper justice with mercy sometimes. So I am of the view, to the extent that Stoneboy and Shatawale are lost as to their next level when it comes to these sanctions, I think Shatterhouse should come again. Shatterhouse should yes. come again. And so let me hear from you, uh, Niaite Hamon. Uh, I, I make reference to his last statement, Shatterhouse should come again against the fact that somebody like Sarkozy and, and lots of the other artists have been suggesting that uh, the artists should not be the only ones taking blame for this. Chatterhouse should also be taking some some blame. Are you uh, is Chatterhouse ever going to take some responsibility for the lapses of the night, especially in terms of uh, arrangements put in place for crowd management and how to organize the funds, how they sit, sit and all of that? Um, thank you. Um, before before I, I go to that, you know, the, the a lawyer friend said that there must be some window to escape. Escape where? Where, where do they want to escape to? There's nowhere to escape to. You know, you must be strict and straight to the point. I not spoke a lot of English, which was very good, <laughs> but the reality is that the board has a discretion. 
and the board applies the discretion as and when it deems fit. And it looks at the gravity of the situation to apply. And so there, there's no need, I mean, there's not a soccer uh, uh, activity where you say that if you do A, then B happens. If you do B, then C happens. No. What, what if even that is put there and now there's another activity that happens that nobody has foreseen, but the board will still have to take a decision on it. You understand me? So even if they are set rules and somebody does something which is not registered in the set rules, you must still act. Mm -hmm. You understand me? As, as Charter, uh, Charter House, obviously, we invited people there. There was a breach of security. You cannot and say... And you couldn't, you couldn't you, anticipate that breach? You know... You didn't make prior arrangements for a possible breach of security? You know, prior to 9-11, <laughs> there was tight security in the United States. But 9-11 happened. You understand me? And after 9-11 happened, they put in security measures at airports, etc. Tight ones, everybody believed so. But still, people put bombs in their shoes and entered and bombed the plane. And what happened next? Now when you're going to the airport, you take off your shoes before you. You know, so you cannot anticipate everything. You can put all the knowledge you have in terms of one thing in place, but anything can happen. And when it happens, you look at that to improve on what you, you, you knew before. And so, yes, as much as we put a tight security as far as we were concerned in place. Obviously, events of the night shows that there was breaches. So, you, we, so, so we you, cannot, we you, cannot you say... You won't admit that you failed. Oh, I mean, Charter House failed. How can, how can you admit failure? It is not failure. Breaches does not mean failure. You understand me? You, you, you cannot... For example, right now, um, we are here in TV3. What if I came here with a gun? I wasn't uh, metal checked in your place. I come here and I shoot or not. Would you say you failed? You've put some security measures in place and you expect that it would help. But when something happens, you see that, okay, I accept the fact that once I bring people there and this has happened, I accept some liability, yes. But it doesn't mean that you failed. It just means you have to improve on what you're doing. Mm. That's a different thing. If we didn't put any security measures in at place all, at all, then you could, then say, you could say you could say something like that, but but not in, in, in such a situation. Right. Uh, let me come to you again, uh, Francis. Uh, I know that at the, at the heart of this has been the key question of artist management. Do you get the sense that perhaps if uh, the two artists had the managers who uh, were proactive, this wouldn't have happened? Well, I think that's... That's a question that, that will be out there for, for anybody to answer. But the point is that uh, we have known that in this country, sometimes the artists are stronger than even their managers. <laughs> um, many artist managers, I mean, we say, just sometimes run errands for the artists. Yeah. Um, there are many artists also who listen to what their managers say. And but but, but uh, one of them passed on the pistol to the <laughs> boy. We don't know who passed it on to him. Uh, I mean, I think the investigations would reveal Worthy. exactly who mm -hmm. did, but somebody might have. We don't know if it's the manager. Um, uh, and so, and if whoever did was, in my view, maybe looking for the interest of him. Uh, of course, it's wrong what he did, but he was perhaps looking for his interest. But just for on the basis of the question whether artist managers failed us, I don't think that can be laid at the doorstep of just artist managers because. What happened was in a very confused it, you know, frenzy. there was a kind of a frenzy uh, sort of a pandemonium, you know, happening. And in that particular situation, it would be too difficult for an artist manager to do anything. Does the VGMA feel embarrassed by this? No, no, of course. I mean, I think even the whole country should be embarrassed um, because this story was on BBC, the Daily Mail, across the international news, you know, channels. So, yes, the VGMA board you know, felt very embarrassed by what happened because, first of all, you have a, an auditorium where you've invited about 4,000 people 
uh, all seated together and had come paid some have yeah. paid some spend their time to come and watch you know an entertainment you have millions of people watching on tv3 tv television and um, watching on our social media platforms watching on dstv across the, uh, the continent and many other places as well so yes there was a big embarrassment because you you just felt that look let's have a, a show for two three hours four hours maximum let people come and sing some dance let people enjoy themselves and go and then this happened it was very embarrassing uh, to say the least. So, so I know that at the heart of all of this, I was speaking about artist management and the role Charterhouse could have played in that. Now, VGMA has instituted sanctions. What are your expectations uh, moving forward? I mean, for example, are you expecting that uh, at the 21st, VGMA, Chatawale and Stoneboy won't be there or you would put in uh, good measures to ensure that what happened didn't happen and you will invite them? What's the, what's the anticipation moving forward? I think the, the, the statement that that was uh, uh, read at the at the press conference during the announcement of the was to say that they will not be involved in uh, nomination participation and maybe even you know, to be voted for or performance for an indefinite for, period for we, performances we as well indefinitely but of course it's a public show if if the announcement is made and they buy a ticket and and they want to attend i don't think anybody will stop mm. them from doing that mm. but in in regards to taking part in the in the vgma that is what the board, which has you know a responsibility to protect the brand, have made, and as 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 was explained by by Mr. Lawyer, that the, the fact that the board said indefinite means that there could be a road you know out of that. It is possible that between now and the next one, things could have happened that would change that decision for. I mean, I'm not wishing that this could happen, but yeah. what if the two artists go to jail? <laughs> Well, uh, I think that that's, <laughs> that has nothing to do with the decision of the board. As I as mentioned earlier, there are two things that happened this week. One was that the board met and decided that let's put some punitive measures to what happened on the night. The other one was that the two gentlemen were invited by the police, and out of that they were arraigned before court, and the court has gr granted them uh, to reappear in a, in a month's time. That is different from that. So whatever happens with that, has absolutely nothing to do, to with, do the with the decisions, decisions of the, the board. Right so right. it could happen, but, well, that's in the bosom of right, whichever uh, so, judge. Um, Mr. Doku, uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, we'll be coming to Bernard Redu to uh, look at the legal legalities, uh, the Public Order Act, uh, where the two artists might have gone wrong. I know the issue is in court, so we can't do too much of uh, detailed discussions of that. But we'll find out uh, whether they really erred and what the severity is and whether they could go to jail or not. And uh, we are I've been also gauging public reaction on this. Uh, we want to show you just that, and we'll come back to the studio for, for more. Yeah, to my view, it's fair. Because as public figure, you shouldn't do certain things. And then there we are a nation that we are now coming up. So other children are looking up to them. So there's a, a, an emergency on them to put up a right behavior. The industry is bigger than these two people. But it's just at this moment, they have the privilege to be reigning. A bus of fans are... In Ghana, GH, you know, a bass music, you know, Stoneboy, Shatawale, Sakodi, a mono Mukuta Gana, ah, in case there's a mono, a mule nephew, a bema, a bear door, oh, a more fans, or more in ye, or more core programs near the idea, indeed, a man does to my soul door, and I'm into me, who would you sanka, a switch, a crabby, Sibia, a crabby, one by seven more band, or more for more day, and yet it's normal because. You know, you can't just cause chaos and go scot free like that. You have to be punished, definitely. And them being banished from the VGMA for some years is normal. After all, some are going to benefit from it, some are going to lose. So you had those views there. Let's uh, get back to the studio very quickly. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bernard Redu, I was asking whether Stoneboy or Shatawale could go to jail in simple terms. Yes, they, they could go to jail. I mean, if, if you take Stoneboy's issue, for instance, he's been charged with offensive conduct and uh, displaying of um, weapon in the public place. If you look at displaying of weapon in the public place, it carries a maximum sentence of five years. Or probably he could be fined for 1,000 penalty units, which is wow. around 12,000 Ghana cities. I need to uh, explain to people here, because uh, there's this notion going around about carrying of gun and display of gun. You see, the laws are very clear. It is a display of guns and not carrying of gun. So even if they had found a gun on Stoneboy, 
without a display in the public mm -hmm. domain or that particular garden, it wasn't an but offense. What, 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 what difference does it make? I mean, if you are, you are registered to carry yes. a firearm yes. and you keep it at your back pocket yes. and you are not displaying it yes. as opposed to something happening and you feel threatened and yes. you, you, you make an effort to maybe use it by displaying it. Uh, you see, if you have a license to carry, that's, that's my question. But laws are made with some incidents in mind. So for instance, why the laws will say that don't display a gun when there's a public gathering is that you don't know the reaction of the individuals there. Probably somebody might see a gun and react in a certain manner that will affect almost everybody there. Somebody so, might just see a gun and shoot and you because of, they because are thinking that yes, you're that is why to shoot them. The laws are very clear that when you are with the public, when you are at a public place, don't display a gun because people mm. react differently. But it's not about just carrying it. If let's say the guy who gave it to Stonewall allegedly had just, he had been found with a gun, registered, and he was licensed to carry a gun, that in itself would not have been an offense because he didn't display it for the public viewing. Okay, what Stoneboy did, as he has been charged, he's going to plead guilt, uh, not guilty. So it means he would have to go into the whole issue and see whether he's guilty or not. If he's found guilty, he could be given custodial sentence, depending on the discretion of the judge, once again. Mm. He could also be fined and probably made to pay some monies. Shata has been charged with a misdemeanor. For him, it is very likely that he may not have custodial sentence. When we say custodial sentence, where you go to jail, mm. because it's a misdemeanor. You could be cautioned, you could be made to pay a fine, or you could also go to jail for a minimum of, uh, a maximum of three years. Mm. But it is usually very much unlikely for judges to sentence people for causing misdemeanors or when they commit crimes. So at, at what point uh, do we say that uh, they have a criminal record, I mean the record which will stick and will be popping up everywhere you go? Once you're convicted, even if you're not sentenced, once the government falls, uh, falls and says that A, B, and C, you are found guilty of committing this particular offense, you are a convict. If you are not sentenced, it doesn't mean you are not a convict. So they become convicts. Mm -hmm for causing that particular... Interesting. Uh, so uh, this is a serious matter. Especially with I mean, Stoneboy's I'm, I'm asking this question in, in relation to the decision that has been taken by the VGMA board to ban the two artists. So let's say if uh, these are all going concurrently, are they facing a criminal could. prosecutions, mm -hmm. and then VGMA has taken an action and they end up in jail, that will be a double uh, jeopardy on them. No, no, no. I mean, the court processes are different from the internal management aspect of um, VGMA. What they have done is to go by their internal directives and ban them. That is very much different from the court processes going on, and it won't be double jeopardy. Double jeopardy would have been probably being tried by the uh, a separate body. Mm. But now that only one criminal prosecution is going on for the act committed by the two, then Internal management decisions by VGME or Charterhouse will not be seen as jeopardy. Job, job right, uh, Arnold, uh, yes. the fact that they could go to jail, does that surprise you? No, of no, course, I mean, it's a legal issue. It's you a know legal issue, and, and, and for us in, in the industry, it will serve as a deterrent to all others as well. Oh, so you have nothing, you have nothing no, wrong it's, against it's, them it's, going it's to important. jail? No, mm. it's important that we let our laws, you know, suffice. They should be shoved into the cooler so that they learn oh, lessons. Oh, if, if the law courts deem it fit, that that is what should be done to them. I mean, I, we, some of us we do not have a problem. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's matters to do with the law, and it's about time that we test the law, especially for the entertainment industry. Mm. Most often than not, issues come up. Uh, people talk about, oh, I'll sue you, I'll take you to court, I'll I'll get you a lawsuit. We do nothing about it. So for the first time, we 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 are about to have a test case scenario where in future we will use it as an example. And, 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 and do well in the industry. Mm, I know but, that yeah. th this will also act as a deterrent to others who might feel yes, to regards, themselves Yes, with regards to the law, way. with regards to the law, I have no problem. My, my, my core issue has to do with the VGMA board. Steve, I mean, you see, we have three problems. Shatawali Stone Board and the VGMA board. <laughs> Why? Yes, because, lawyer, I mean, this morning, in a couple of minutes, we've explained and you've talked about the fact that the attempts and conditions and rules, there's, there's some loopholes in there. You confirmed it. You are a neutral person. I see the pusher of my boss here, VGMA board member, that he feels there's nothing wrong with the rules and regulations and, and that is discretion. Watch him. 
<laughs> Even if you will not consider my, my own, because I'm, I'm, I'm a familiar face, the lawyer is a neutral, neutral person. He's telling you that the, the terms and conditions must be worked on. But here you are telling me that you, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with it. That's the, you see, that's our problem. 20 years, are one of our major problems has, has been with, to do with the board. <laughs> they, they assume and they exert so much power. Sometimes it they bust my mind. <laughs> hey, seriously. You understand? Meanwhile, meanwhile, we have, we have stakeholders in these award scheme. How can a board assume such powers when, when we have it's a public domain award? I do not get it. But what is the representation of the board? I'm sure other... Big man, 30%. Uh, with, regards to, with regards to some decision making, and this time I'm talking about voting. No, he was asking about representation. representation oh, like the board. Ah, okay, yes, 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 yes. He, he needs to clarify. Oh, we'll clarify so it. The board is made up of 15 people. Mm -hmm. um, four of the people come from Chatterhouse. The rest are across the, the industry, from media to musica. Musica has a two representation of the board. So it cuts across the spectrum of the industry. So. Just to clarify that, it's a very representative board of the industry. So I not can continue. No. I can continue? Yes. Okay. Big man, lawyer, you can, you can help here. <laughs> Is it possible that in a company where somebody has 40% shares, 30% shares, and another has 30% shares, can the, that one with 30% take decisions for, for the company? It depends. If, yeah, it depends if voting rights are not tied mm -hmm. to shareholding, and okay. everybody, once you are... I like, the, I like the legal expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very important because these people, they, they, they think that, they are too powerful. There are some companies... <laughs> but, they, but they are they like, powerful. Why should they be powerful? <laughs> <laughs> you see, if, if, they are, if the voting rights are not tied to the percentage of shareholding, mm -hmm. then it means anybody at on the board has an equal vote. Okay. But there are some companies where voting rights are tied to the percentage of shareholding, where even some people are giving casting votes, means that when there's a tie, he could use his like, superior yes. voting position yes. to take a decision. Yes. I don't know what pertains with um, the board with VGM or Chatterhouse. Once, <laughs> once the representations are not, uh, voting rights are not tied to representations, then it means everybody has an equal rights, depending or irrespective of the percentage of allocation of the board. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just Francis. going to explain. I think Arnold is putting two issues together. What Arnold was asking about was the voting for um, artists or nominees during VGMA and the, and the apportionment of the votes. So the board has 30% uh, voting rights I mean, in terms of... Uh, no, he was talking uh, about the ratio. decisions of the board. No, he, he, that's why I'm saying he was mixing, mixing, mixing the two. two uh, issues. I'm not mixing, I'll explain it. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. yeah. so there's a voting which is 30, 30, 40. 30 for the board. There's an academy which is even bigger than the board, which is made up of people from across the country in the, in the industry, which has also 30%. And then the public, which has 40%. But that's on majority of the award categories. There are some which are restricted only to the board and the academy as well, which mm -hmm. are the technical you know, aspect of it. So that's, that's how the voting okay. so like, right. I'm actually, so it has okay. nothing I'm to actually do talking about that. one of the sanctions where the board has, has requested or demanded the artists to actually retain their plaques and also stripping them of the awards they won that particular night. Yes, yes. And in this, in this jurisdiction, the fact is, in the determination of winners, it is not just the board's decision. Yes. Like you said, the public has a 30%, a 40%, you know, yeah, voting, voting rights in yes. determining so your, wins. your view is that the public should have had exactly. the majority right to decide whether or yes. not the two artists should be yes. banned. And especially when the public well, has the expended... The of their words. Yes. The public should vote for that. No, for what I recall. mean is, what I mean for the recall and the stripping. The public should have a say. Why not? Ooh, okay. Because we expended our, our energy, our resources in determining. So, how will the public do that? Consult through, us through voting. Consult us or through a public forum. There's so a how, way. How, how, how do you, how do we consult? You? How do you consult? Put it out. Make a referendum. Facebook. A referendum. Ah, but you, what you, what do you figure? I say you waiting. I don't. I don't. Uh, See, that's the apostle. On, on the VGM was here. You last. They don't consider anything. Let, let, let me come in with one of these. You see, I know. You see, the awarding body has the right to recall the award. So, for instance, let's take you know what they say about degrees. So, people go mm -hmm. through university education, and they pay their semester fees, facility user fees. They are given degrees, but you hear often that because of certain actions or inactions, the degrees have it's been withdrawn. Withdrawn, and it is because it was awarded. 
it wasn't as if you earned it because of some particular action of yours. So anything which is awarded, the awarding body has the authority, has the power to recall it, based on what it deems fit. Lawyer. So let, let's correct. No, let's no, correct. No, 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 but, no, no, but, no, but, but, no. The issue is... Example of sports. Mara Sharapova, uh, Marion Jones, you know, and all that. Even though they won, uh, based on, yeah, based on competition. People pay to go to the stadium to yes, watch them. Yes. No, sir. And they won. It was stream. Yeah, no, those no, people no, no, no. Call to I right. disagree. The so, fact that you are there, should we stream or them they, or they not? consult those who are at the stadium at that time. Yeah. No. We, no. Has the public has do, do, do the public have stake in FIFA or the IAF? I do not think so because even in our in our own entertainment circles, we've seen some before. Mm. I mean. The Grammys in, in 1990 mm -hmm. stripped off an uh, award for Millie Vanilli mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for the fact that the, 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 lip the Grammys realized that mm -hmm. they were not the guys who were mm -hmm. actually doing the vocal, mm -hmm. so they had to strip them off. You know the reason why? Mm -hmm. Because the Grammy is made up of academy members who are I mean, taken from the industry. Mm -hmm. There's no public participation. And so when you are making decisions based on your own awards, because you have no public involvement, you don't care about the public. Mm -hmm. You understand? In 2017, I, I mean, for the guys who watch... Um, House of Cats. I mean, Kevin Spacey. He was given a lifetime award for some sexual misconduct. He was stripped of his lifetime achievement award. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because the Emmy, the Academy for the Emmys, ha has no public involvement. So mm -hmm. they do not want to consider what the, the, public, the public thinks or believes in. Yes. In the VGMA, the description. Boss, wait. The description of the <laughs> award is, is the public domain award. Yes. The public has some stake in the award. Percentage. Especially with the determination of winners. Yes. And so. If you want to consider something that affects the public, you need to consult. Okay. No, 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 no. Let's hear from the mm. IT. Oh, you know the way. Are you not the one to talk? No. <laughs> you know, um, I know. Yes, sir. The award scheme mm -hmm. have terms and conditions, and so you sign to the terms and conditions. And you bind yourself with and those. And you bind yourself to be part of the awards. Now. When the nominations are out, the scheme informs the public that these are the nominations. If you have a favorite, you can decide to vote for the favorite to win a particular award. The artists to go ahead to campaign to people to help them or to support them so that they could emerge winners. Now, once you, you decide to bind yourself to the scheme, it means that you would go pair the regulations of the scheme. And so if your actions or inactions causes an affection to the scheme and the scheme takes a decision against you, it is not against the people who contributed in terms of the board, the academy, and the public. So if we, if we have any worry like he's trying to put out, that worry should go to the artist for failing to abide by the terms and conditions they signed to for them to be um, to go through that kind of sanction they went through. The, the board does not need to consult the public. the public or the various stakeholders to take that decision. That decision is taken based on the board's uh, terms and conditions with which it works with. And so once we've agreed that we are all going to be civil and you decide not to be civil, then you have, when, to, bear the you have to bear the consequences of that. I, I you, think... you, you haven't made a comment on uh, the knowledge that Shatawale and Stoneboy could go to jail. Can, can we hear what you make of that? Um, that, that, is, that is a tough one. I mean, nobody would cried out on their worst enemy or I wouldn't cry out on my worst enemy but if that is the law that is the law um, it will be unfortunate but as Arnold put it sometimes things do happen for a purpose you understand me and mm. as a Christian too I believe everything that happens happens for a purpose happens for a purpose God knows why it has to happen All right. and so it, it will be it will be devastating, you know, not for just them, family, fans, and fans. but that is the law. We are all under the law.
I'm so, just thinking through yeah. with the analogy I know you just made. Yes, sir. If the public, because mm-hmm. for instance, that is through the actions or probably in actions of Stoneboy and Shatter mm-hmm. that has caused this tripping. Yeah. So if you are claiming that you voted for Stoneboy and mm-hmm. probably were to get some satisfaction. No, I'm coming for Stoneboy. Just, no, just, yeah. oh, yeah. just as an example. I'm, I'm, just, just as an example. Just, just as, as an example. Or Shatter Wally. Let, <laughs> and you as, 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 as an individual did that because he's your big man and you wanted him to really win it. And if <coughs> through his actions, he's lost this thing that you really expected to probably laugh with or make all sort of noise with. If you have any legal redress, it shouldn't be against the organizers who have stripped the award from Stoneboy or Shatter, but it should be against the Shatter or the Stoneboy because it is through his actions. That is why he's, he, he, he's been stripped off. So if you are talking because you voted for him and you want to take the VGMA, they should have consulted you. It is not the board uh, doing. It is the doing of your artist. So if you are saying that as a public you should be consulted, then you guys, the who I'm not sorry to personalize. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's so right. those who voted for Shatter and Stoneboy should be demanding answers from Shatter and Stoneboy. Yes, I totally get that. But I'm, I'm and, and do, do, do you get that analogy? I, I, so, yes, it, yeah. makes, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. But I'm not even speaking for as a fan of, of, of Stoneboy or Shatterwale who voted for the artist to win. I'm speaking in terms of the fact that the awards consider the public as an integral part of their scheme. Yes. You understand where I'm coming yes. from? And in other examples, like the ones, the, those yes. I, I, I stated, yes. the public is not considered. It is not part of, of the mechanisms of the scheme. In this regard, we play an integral part. And so you do not take a decision, you understand, that has to do with the public and say, okay, you are the board. Meanwhile, you to the board, you have mandate. Mm. You know, your mandate when it, when it comes to... The, the argument the, is quite... You're overstretching this I'm not That's, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. I'm not it's overstretching the argument. Stripping and examples. telling them to bring their flag, that's overstretching it. Yes, because you see, the point... What, what you are trying to, to, uh, to, to, to impress on all of us yes. is to say that because the public had a stake by voting, they should have been consulted. But I, shouldn't they have No, I, I think that would be very far-fetched and overstretching this whole thing. Because you see, they are the organizers. They ask you for your inputs, and this is what you decided to do. And like you said, it's in categories. The public voting is given some percentage, yeah. a certain academy is given some percentage, and the and board is given some percentage. So let me ask you, yes. even in percentage-wise, if, for instance, the percentage of the board and the academy is yes. greater than the public... I'm coming, just let me, let me finish. Finish. Don't you think the public voting is in the minority? Because, for instance, what percentage did you give to the public? 40. 40. And the 60 goes with the... Academy. Academy. So one. now, even the public is a minority when it comes to the, the decision. So you can't say that because the public voted and because uh, you expected your artists to hold on to whatever, you are going to sue or they should have consulted you. I, I don't think that <laughs> is what stretching it. Lawyer, me, I am part of right. the academy. Mm. And I'm pissed. <laughs> because I expended my fuel and wasted my time to go and sit in some room and voted. They didn't consult me. You didn't waste your time. I did. You because waste. you said somebody should, should you throw somebody off the award. You know, you didn't yeah. waste your time. I think you, I did. You, you, you used your time profitably uh-huh. because you went there not for one person. You went there you, for you, the you scheme. Voted, you voted a lot across, board. Yes, across board. No, but you you get me. Get... You voted uh-huh. for the scheme across board. So, your, so your, your, Anna, your key disagreement is that uh, the public was not consulted. Yes, and even the academy. You understand? See, my issue is the board. Actually, the public, the public, was waiting on the board to make to a make a decision. We're waiting because, for the organizers. Because to... if, if you if you if you if you if we you listen if you listen to or if you follow if you follow social media or you listen to people after the event, everybody was waiting or making comment to see what the board is going to do against these two. You get me? So that the public had the trust in the board to take decisions on that will behalf. on their behalf that will befit the actions that, that were happened. taken on the night of the event and so it is it is not to say that the board cannot take that decision in fact even everybody was looking to them to take a decision and that the board took and took a very you know when you look at the 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 action on the night not only was the scheme denigrated, not only was Ghana abused, but internationally, it was a shame. 
In fact, after the award, what is everybody speaking about? It, it has a dire effect. Even, you know, there are, there are concerts and things for um, um, this concert that's supposed to happen in December. Um, what's the name? The foreign uh, concert. The Afro, Afro, no, the, the beach thing. The beach thing. Yeah. They can decide to take it away because there's no security. You, it has a, a, a severe impact. impact. Even tourism. You, you get me? Because and look, the number the year, of people. This is the year of the return. Year the of year the return. of the return. Mm -hmm. The number of people who were in there, the dignitaries, the, the British High Commissioner, we had flown in people from the UK, Mobile Awards, okay, from South MTV. Africa, from MTV Base, from uh, US. I mean, they were dig people. And so the, the picture that was sent of Ghana demanded a very strong message to be sent. To everybody, the, the message is not necessarily about Shatter or Stone Boy. The message is a message from the scheme to the industry and to the world that these kinds of things are not and should not be condoned or be seen to be uh, played with kids' glove. You need to deal with it the same way it dealt with the nation. Steve, if I could yeah. also say, Thank just you, yeah. to put it in perspective, that the job of the board is a bit broad. It goes beyond just voting. Uh, and Arnold knows this, so. <laughs> because the board sets out, first of all, to categorize every, um, each of the awards that we give into a certain category. So that's also a responsibility of the board. In doing that, the board doesn't ask the public that. Where should we put mm -hmm. Gringo? Where should we put... Uh, Top skanker, where should we put this and all that? The board does that on behalf of the scheme. Secondly, the board also has a responsibility to ensure that they announce the nominations. That, okay, this year we announced the nomination from this day to this day. Now you can put in your, your nominations. And when that comes, the board has a responsibility to now look through all and, and apportion. Third one also, the board now needs to approve the calendar for the VGMA for each year. So in 20. 19, for example, there was a calendar of different events that would take place. Chatterhouse is the organizer, but they put that before the board to, to approve that. The board doesn't go to seek the public to say that this is what we've done. I, I get an also argument that in the sole area of voting, the public takes part in it. But that's because about it. That's about, that's about all that's the public about it. does. Right. That's Hello. about it. No, if I you have to go. Ahead. To go. We'll come back. It, you know. I know that we've had uh, quite a lot of uh, discussion, heated discussion on this uh, Stoneboy Shatterwale issue, but we have a lot on our playtime. Stephen Enti, this is uh, Key Points. You can join us via WhatsApp 020 And uh, share your thoughts with us. You can post them on Facebook also. We're also live on 3FM 92.7. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back to Key Points. I still have Francis Doku, uh, Niaite Hammond, Arnold uh, Samoa Beidou, and Bernardo Radio in the studio. So we want to quickly wrap up with uh, Shatawale and Stoneboy issues. Uh, let me start to, uh, let me uh, come to you, um, Francis. Uh, there, there, there have been discussions on the effect this, is, this could have on the brand of VGMA, the brands of Shatawale and uh, Stoneboy. Do you think this is going to have a very big negative bash on the brands of everyone involved in the 20th um, edition of the VGMA, which went sour? Um, I think to some extent there's a possibility too, but I don't think that we need to uh, kid <coughs> ourselves that. Look, Shatawale is a very big musician. Stone Boy is also a big musician. I think oh, that you don't think indefinite bans would affect their brands negatively? No, I, I, I don't think it would affect them negatively. The endorsements and all of that. Oh, they could lose endorsements for appearing in court and all of that. I, I don't think so, especially in our markets. You know, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it would affect them negatively, too negatively. Uh, because they, they already big. Then why ban it. them if it's not going to have any effect <coughs> on it's, their it's, brands? It's, 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 no, but we didn't ban them to have effect on their brand. But you never know who's listening or watching. <laughs> what we did was what happened to the, the scheme, the VGMA on the night. The effect it had on it, the impact it had across the country, and the impact globally as well. That's why they brought to the decision. Uh, but when you talk about whether it would have negative impact on the brand, I, I think, I don't think it would 
um, because you don't think all you know. I mean, I'm <laughs> no, I mean, I think this, this, this is no exact science. So yeah, is, definitely, we won't be uh, sure. There's a possibility because when you're doing brand, you know, analysis, there are different things that affect your brand. Would this, you know? impact negatively maybe to an but i don't think that it would it would across board it, across it board because in in about three years ago uh, or so when shatter wasn't taking part in the pgma and sakodia had issue with charter house so he also said he won't appear on the night pgma still went the two on. of them organized a concert that night at Collegono, big concert <laughs> to kind of take the shine, shine it didn't mm -hmm. knock it off the show went on People came to the awards, those who deserve to win one, and everything went on. So I believe that everybody should be able to do what they want to do. And uh, it's, a free, it's a free country. But the public <coughs> eventually need to decide whether, look, because Stombo and Shatter will not be available to perform on the night, do we go on? That's a, an issue That's for it. the right. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, brand yeah. issues. Uh, Chatterhouse <laughs> is uh, is at the heart of it, and they're suggesting that you should have taken more responsibility. And all things you failed, but you say you didn't fail. Uh, so yeah. overall, do you get a sense that this will take a shine off the brands <coughs> of uh, Chatterhouse, of VGMA, and those of the artists? Um, not not um, take up, take away the shine of the brand. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure what, what uh, that is and what it um, is going to do. But obviously, uh, uh, the incident itself having a taint on the awards, the 20th anniversary, I mean, we, we can all see. Uh, it's negative enough. That, it's negative but enough. But you don't think beyond you know, that there, should, but, but there beyond would be that, any damages we should worry about? No, beyond that, I don't think there, uh, there will be any damages. I mean, obviously, what what has happened is 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 going to change the face of security for events you know because we've all been in the country we've all gone for various events you get me and we all have passed through various security uh, checks and all that but this would now make or, or would now allow us, not just Chatterhouse, but all who um, have events, even including your event that is going to happen next week, for example, Talented Kids, to put in different security measures than what you were planning even to do, because we know that we cannot take things for granted. We cannot take yes. things for granted, adults. Well, we, we must admit that they failed. I mean... <laughs> You, you, there must be that admittance of failure. Well, but they then not, you improve the system. They're not admitting. They say that they. Oh, put but in we place drum it into their heads. Measures. It's important mm -hmm. that they admit because I mean, Steve. I mean, if you wish that we could ban them, also, right? Oh, we should also level some punitive measures on, mm. on them as event organizers. Charter house. Because Steve, I if, you were if going you are to say on the board, there, you people there, you board, yeah, yeah, forget yourself. <laughs> You see, if, if you're an event organizer, you have that responsibility, safety, mm. security, and health related stuff. So if I come and I, there's an issue, you need to take that, that blame. And so for them, that admittance I'm taking that blame, I've already done. No, you that, said you've not, not failed. It, no, and I'm saying you failed. I think it considered. I mean, I've listened yep. to, I've listened to uh, uh -huh. Madame Teresa Ayoade. Mm -hmm. I've listened to George Quay. I've mm -hmm. listened to Mr. Hammond on different platforms. They, they consider. On this platform, he's not considered. Oh, consider. That was the first thing I did. You said you've not failed, but then no, there's some the breaches. You're talking about failure. I said breaches. So the breach doesn't make it a failure. But me, I'm telling you, it was a failure. You said if there was no security put in place at all, that's what you say. And the analogy that you made, the fact that, oh, US, they have a tight security and 9 11 have it, it means their security system failed them at the time. So, as Chatterhouse, as organizers, you failed us as patrons. So, admit that you failed, and then there will be improvement. <laughs> the failed, yeah, yes, underlined. So, so the word fail is what you want. You will not admit. admit. It's a board member. He's a VGMA board member. How will you admit failure? Would you admit that you failed Chatterhouse? We failed what? You failed the system. You, you were unable to ensure enough security safety. safety. <laughs> Say you failed there. <laughs> no, he's not. You would. Uh, we have a board so, member. He so, uh, Mr. Radu, uh, <laughs> we, we've been going back and forth <laughs> yeah. about uh, all that has happened in in terms of future events yeah. and organizations and how to put in place orderly conduct of everything. What would you recommend? Well, first and foremost, the behavior of the artist. I mean, they should understand that they share the public space with other people and they should not allow the fans and all those things get into their heads because you see when you do that you are not the only person who's affected 
Arnold here yeah. is, is, is well. He's very much affected. I he's mean, agitated. He's very much so. Yeah. I mean, speaking with emotions. He said he was pissed. Yes. <laughs> you 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 hurt your fans. You hurt the organizers, and you hurt the I mean, entire I, nation. I was disappointed. So very. and they should know that Article 17 is still clear that there is equality before the law. You can be Shatawale, you can be Stoneboy. You can be a Kufu. You can be a Kufu. But you have, if you, if you should have breaches with the law, the law will deal with you, hmm. just as it will deal with the man at Choco or the man in my village at Achimkusi. Hmm. So they are equal before the law, and they should live their life having that at the backs of their minds. And so that's the behavior of the artists. What about the organizers? Well, for me, I, 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 I saw police presence. So it means um, they actually complied with the provisions of the public order. I mean, there was police presence yes, even which, on the stage. Yes, even on the stage. So. The only thing I would add is they should ensure that um, there's enough security. Because you see, as we speak right now, those they invited, if there's anybody amongst them who felt like, okay, probably I went through this emotional hurt, yes. emotional trauma because of this particular incident that happened on stage, yes. they can take them on. Yes. For occupiers, liability, and all that. Because once you're the organizers, the safety and protection of those who patronize your program is in your hands. Thank you, Lord. You have a duty of care <laughs> towards those who come to patronize your programs. So they should have I this swear. at the back of their mind that you see, <laughs> if I, I saw people being carried off on stretcher and all yes. that, those people, if they can uh, link, that whatever happening to them, to whatever happened on stage, they have they can seek redress in court. But, but I, I, I'll have you hold. I need to come back to you. Yeah. I mean, I'm scandalized that uh, somebody could even sneak a gun into an event of that nature. Were there no uh, metal detectors or scanners to ensure people don't carry such weapons with them? Not only guns, knives, sharp objects, and pepper spray also. What did you do at the check-in? Okay. <clears throat> to start with, I'm not part of the uh, security team. I'm in the production, technical production area. But in terms of briefing, which I, I yeah, am aware... You're aligning your DGs now, so... <laughs> yeah, no, 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 he's not No, 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 he's not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> in terms of the briefing, <laughs> that I, I knew of uh, what the security protocol had been put in place, it included scanners. You understand? But you, you played, you, you were in a managerial role. I yeah, it included, it included scanners. Yeah. And, and obviously... Once this has happened, you can understand that, and everybody can understand, it's not rocket science, that mm -hmm. there were breaches. And there are those who have also indicated that in coming into the venue, they were scanned. So that means that, yes, the scanners were there. <clears throat> As I said, if a breach happens, it's a breach, and you must work towards improving it. You get me? So, because... We are, but we are, we are, we are, we are we're told that we're, they, we're told that the musicians and their fans are not scanned. I mean, other people are scanned. Them, people. No, the musicians that, that, just that, go that, in. That, that's they're what, that's they're boys what, and farm base. They just walk in. Okay, that's that, a breach. I, I, that's a I, failure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know that because I wasn't there. <laughs> you get me when they were coming in. But um, as I was saying, let's even assume, without admitting, that they were given preferential treatment, treatment to the artists you get me it then means based on this that has happened it then means that at event grounds those preferential treatments will, will no longer be given mm -hmm. because what has happened is been abused so there's a lesson for you, you get, also obviously and i've admitted that you get me and we are not event organizing company. We are not a security company. So obviously, <laughs> we, we give out like that, that that role and responsibility to a company to handle. But eventually, if anything, there's a breach anywhere, obviously, being the organizers, we still have to take the blame, which we have. You get me? But if, if the, the security that was put in place, in fact, for all our events that we've had, that is the one, this last one, had the high over high 85 school. uh security personnel from national security police military private, private security, security mttd all that you get me we, we try to because yeah there are so many aspects of the mm. security people breaking into people's cars people picking people you know so you you try to deal with every aspect of the security but there's been a breach and we accept that and henceforth not just charter house but i believe in the whole entertainment or event organizing um, industry, security 
will be taken more seriously than we've been doing. It. Right. Uh, so let me come back to Arnold. Also shaking his Arnold, I think that if I give Arnold the next twenty minutes, oh, I wanted to give you some up. example. We okay. So give us uh, yes. one example. You see, if two. if somebody or a patron who 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 suffered at the event takes Nia Itego and his company to court, he will not talk about Nia Itego. Come on, sorry. To court, he will not, yeah, court, he will not be speaking which <laughs> matter. Let me just give you an example, then I will not talk again. <laughs> in, two, in 1991, PDD, formerly known as Puff Daddy, formerly known as Didi. Change his name like Chameleon. <laughs> organized um, a, a, a charity basketball game. There was a stampede. Nine people lost their lives. Now, let me tell you the, the security measures that he put in place for the event. Police department had 66 officers. 30 private security officers and the promoters himself. He hired 20 security officers. That's more than 100. Yes, though, because there was a stampede and some people lost their lives, there was a lawsuit. Oh, definitely. They can take that. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. when yeah. I go to wait, when I take oh. you on, I'll go to court and then you tell me there was a breach. Yeah. So admit that you failed. You see that thing? But the man has consistently said you just don't want to. Uh, you just want the word fail. You, you, you want the word fail. But Steve, but you, 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 you want the word fail. Yeah, but but I'm making reference to uh, failure. But he yes. said there were breaches. So, and, uh, uh, but so you think it's failure? Wait, 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 kind of I mean, you I think it's failure? <laughs> I'm asking the questions. <laughs> I am so, so process. I mean, I mean, at the heart of the discussion is the event, the event yeah. itself, yeah. and where it took place. Uh, does this now bring us to the conclusion that perhaps we should be thinking about a more secured event location for such high-profile public well, events I mean, than that, the dome? That, that's a no-brainer. You know, um, one of the things that this industry has cried about most is venue Ven for events. Mm -hmm. And I think that even in the manifesto of the uh, MPP before they won, mm -hmm. they they said that they would build venues for you know events. I think one in Kumasi, one in Takwa. We're waiting for that. You know, we're waiting for that. So it is a worry for the industry that there should be a place big enough to contain people and conducive enough for the kind of production that you want to do yeah, for, for, the kind for of television numbers. you know because it does it does appear yeah. crowded sometimes I yeah but this, uh, you know uh, and i think that in all these uh, discussions that we've had over the last one week there hasn't been enough uh, commendation to chatter house in the fact that they put <laughs> up they put up a dome within one week you know for the event to take place a dome that that would accommodate up to about five thousand people I mean, the alternative was the main room of the conference center, which is up to about 1,000, the maximum 2,000, you know. So in ensuring that because it's the 20th anniversary, we need to go into a place bigger than the usual place we've been for about 10 or 15 years. They put in the necessary investment to put a place like that for the anniversary event and then maybe also something for other events. And so, yes, it is worrisome that we do not as a... As a nation if you like have, have any, any such places and i think also that it's also an opportunity for i mean previously we had the the, the other dome which is on the other side yeah. which was bigger also yeah. took about up to about three thousand four thousand people but i think there were a bit of security issues with that one so it was grounded and so there's a new dome also at trade fair uh, which takes a lot more people but why some um, event organizers feel that they do not want to use that it's because of the of the height okay. because for p such a production you need a longer height you know, and all that but it's a big place for any event to take place and i mean those could be used also but the fact remains that when it comes to an auditorium for events as a country as a country we're lucky, we're lucky, we're lucky. We're lucky. right yeah, so i think so we'll have to wrap up uh, this discussion with stone boy uh, thank you very much francis doku is the general manager mg digital and radio is a board member of vgma ni aite hamon is head of production charterhouse and also a member of vga i didn't introduce him as head of production charterhouse earlier but um Arnold also is uh, Arnold is a Moabedu, an entertainment analyst. I have Bernard Redu, who is a legal practitioner. He will be remaining with us as we continue the discussions. But uh, Francis, uh, Nia Itehamon, and Arnold will be taking leave of us as we uh, launch into the, the second discussion on our agenda, which, which is the special prosecutor hauling Mahama Yaruga to court over tax evasion charges. We'll be right back. Please stay.
Right, welcome back to uh, Key Points. I'm Stephen Enti. We have been joined by uh, a, a two, three more uh, guests. Uh, the three left us and we got replaced by three. Uh, let's quickly introduce uh, them for the second uh, section of our show. Uh, we have Al uh, Alhaji Al Hassan uh, Suhini, is MP for uh, Tamale North. Uh, he's here. Uh, Bernard Radio has, always, has been here already. Legal practitioner has been here since morning. And then uh, next to, on my right hand side, we have Richard Ahiangba, who is the MPP uh, communications, a member of the MPP communications team, and uh, private legal practitioner Martin Pebble. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you on on the show. And uh, we'll be launching into the discussion on the special prosecutor beginning the prosecution against uh, uh, Boku Central MP Mahama Yaruga. But before that, uh, let me quickly uh, read through some of the message you've been sending to our WhatsApp line 02021666. Three, three, three. Uh, this one says, now they want to take Stoneboy on just because he was de defending himself. How about Charterhouse, who failed in terms of security? You didn't uh, give us your name, but next time, add your name so we can acknowledge that. And uh, from... Bipwa Mohammed in Wa says Chatterhouse should seriously be blamed for the unfortunate incident that happened at the VGM. I understand Chatterwale did not even uh, sit where he was originally giving. It's also a fact that security was loose and protocols were not followed. Uh, thank you very much. And this one also from Noel. Uh, Universal, Noel Universal from Ho says, good morning, comrades. For me, I think the decision taken by the board is, is not really free and fair because the two parties were rude, but one overreacted. If not, we could have experienced an excellent show. And indeed, I like your outfits uh, so well with uh, the set in the studio this morning. Okay, you didn't add your name, but thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is William uh, from Takradi. Can we take Charterhouse to court? Uh, because... They couldn't provide us a good security in the auditorium. If people could send guns inside just to harm people, then can you imagine? All right. So uh, Wilson from Aigbe Town says, I believe it's about time we brought some decency and discipline into our music industry. The vulgar words used in our music even informs the behavior of people. It's rather unfortunate. Stoneboy had to uh, fall so low for the unruly behavior of Shatawale. And uh, T-Flex Inside Takradi says, I think the decision was too harsh and it will be a very big blow if Charterhouse organizes a program and these artists are not on board. But Charter did not uh, force Kra say, okay, some tree you are writing, but. I can't uh, read all of that. Uh, but Babamu in Tamale, you also say the decision of the VGMA board to ban Chatewale and Stoneboy for their misconduct on Saturday's awards night was a step in the right direction. And Stephen, my honest view is that what Stoneboy and Chatewale did was not right, but they were never advised when it started long ago. The decision by Chatterhouse is an overkill. This is from Paul from Brikusu. And uh, uh, lessons from Ikropong. Uh, you didn't say your name, but I... I hope your, your name is Lesson. Okay, so Lesson from Ikropon says, Chatterhouse failed to provide security. So if they are stripping their walls from Stoneboy and Shatter, then they should also be stripped of hosting the VGMA. And I am Thomario. I do agree with Arnold that the public should have had a say in this. The question is, was the Academy part of the VGMA board's decision to strip them of their awards won? If not, the 30% voting power cannot outweigh the 70 percent and uh, thank you very much and this one also doesn't have a name but you say that i think stoneboy hasn't been treated fairly at all by the board for giving equal punishment to both of them we all know who started this whole brawl shatawale should have maximum punishment and not equalize and theophilus asari from achim takrasi says that the rts are to blame for the incident and must take responsibility so those were your messages uh, you can send us more on our whatsapp line 02021666333 and we'll share with the rest of the world you can post them on our facebook course as well so let's quickly uh, get back to our discussions i know that you follow this week the decision by the special prosecutor to start Prosecutions against Bahama Yaruga for tax evasion charges. There have been those who have uh, questioned the efficiency of the special prosecutor since he has he assumed office. There are those who say that he has been in office, uh, didn't have the logistics to work, and now suddenly he has started prosecuting and no other person than the Boko Central MP. Is this um, 
Is this a loud statement enough for the fight against corruption, or this is just one of those uh, political uh, game plays and propagandas uh, between MPP and NDC? Let's start the discussion. I'll start with you, Martin Bibble. Mm -hmm. I know that you have been an advocate of uh, the fight against corruption, and that anything that uh, that uh, encourages mm -hmm. uh, fighting mm -hmm. uh, the canker yeah. is good. Yeah. Do you get the sense that Martin Amidu, after many months of not being seen to be active, finally has what it takes to make that statement that he's serious in that office? Uh, I'm thinking that this first case is, doesn't quite fit the bill. Yes, this case. It doesn't fit the bill of high profile? Yes, yes, it doesn't. Or high-end crime? Yes, yes. Yeah, then why is, are we in court? This is minor in the, in the scheme of affairs. That's why I'm wondering why he chose this one. You know, when it comes to custom duties and this, you know, there are so many uh, government agencies and even professional associations where people are granted exemptions and they are abused. You say, so in terms of the bill, this is small, this is small. Because you know, doctors, teachers, you know, all other uh, categories of professionals get exemptions to bring in cars, and these cars are sold on, you know. So for <laughs> Mr. Yargeson to have uh, 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 brought him to court is quite, you know, it's strange. What are, what, what, are, what are your expectations? I mean, you know Martin Amido, and so you possibly know that if he didn't have a good case, he won't be in court. Oh, no. As for, yes, okay, it's good if you ask the question this way. As for having a good case, it may be, oh, that one, no, 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 no. We can't dispute that, knowing Mr. Amidu's pedigree and the rest. But we're talking about whether this is the right case to start with, mm -hmm. you see. Is this, is this case high profile enough? You see, that is where, especially looking at the extent of the loss, you see. So what it is is that he, uh, Mr. Ayarga had, uh, what do you call it, an exemption. He's brought in the car. Instead of using it personally, assuming, and I don't want to go so much into the facts because it's a matter pending before the court. But assuming it says, you're looking at the figures, it's saying he should have paid 36000 but he paid 6000 you see. So you're looking at the, that's a loss to yeah. the state. That's about 30000 Ghana. So you see what I said, it doesn't that's quite right. fit that's the bill. Because there are bigger cases. People have reported cases worth millions of dollars. <laughs> Why didn't we <laughs> start, start with any of them? And it's interesting. I was just uh, monitoring, or not, not monitoring, actually just reading around. And I saw some, uh, uh, an interview that Mr. Pikubaku is uh, said to have granted, where he was thinking that perhaps there is a feud between Mr. Amidu and uh, Ayarega. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, stemming from the vetting, you know, at the vetting, yeah. there were some uh, disagreements, a banter. So he's thinking that perhaps, you know, we are not saying definitely that is what it is. But where your first case uh, is about a loss of 30,000 Ghana to the state, uh, it's, it it's, doesn't quite. It's, it doesn't quite. All right, so let me come to you, another lawyer, uh, Bernard <coughs> Redu. Uh, this is a legal matter, so I know that as much as possible we would uh, not want to discuss uh, the substance of, of yeah. it all, but we are in court. The special prosecutor is in court for the state, prosecuting and chasing the uh, Boko Central MP, who obviously, as a member of parliament, has a certain level of immunity anyway. But is this a high-profile case enough for you? Martin Amidu thinks, no, chasing somebody like that for mm -hmm. 30,000 uh, is not a loud statement enough for the fight against corruption. Well, I, I, I would think otherwise, because for me, it sends a right signal. Because if um, I has a big fish, and if Martin could go after such a big fish, then you, it sends a good signal that he's out there to go after everybody. But there are other big fishes who come from you the see, MPP who are not see, in court. The point I want to make is, Mahama Ayariga is MP, he's been a minister of state, he's a real big fish. So for even the special prosecutor to start from him, it sends some signal out there that this man is serious to fight corruption. Because yes, Martin makes the point that there are real big fish, other people with serious cases. I mean, corruption is corruption, irrespective of the figure involved. Or, it is whether, the act. or whether you are big or small. Whether you are big or small, it is the act. Because if you're supposed to pay 36,000 and you paid 6,000, God knows where else you've done other things. So for me, it is the act that we should condemn and not probably the figures involved. And the fact that 
is starting from somebody like Ayarika, is sending some strong signal all out there that even a former minister and the current and the sitting MP is being chased by the, the special prosecutor. Then you, a DC somewhere, or any other person, you, you, you are not safe if you should go up, uh, uh, on with your corrupt deeds. So for me, it's rather a good signal that it is starting from somebody as big as Muhammad Yari. Let's forget about the figures coming out. I mean, it is the act. Did he evade tax? Is it lawful? Is it within the mandate of the special prosecutor to do that? Then we, we, we can say that, okay, because there have been noise over the days that what is he doing since his appointment? He came up with this logistic, uh, logistical challenges initially, but now I'm sure he has a furnished office, staff, and all people to work with. So if he started with a sitting MP, the emphasis is on a sitting MP, then it means he's out there to do something good. He's showing that he means business. Yes, I mean, he's serious with his office. I hear you guys back. So, uh, Honorable uh, Suhini, I want to know from you, I'm not sure whether to break your view from the party's position, but Ayarga is in court now. A uh, special prosecutor is dragging him uh, for what he says are uh, tax evasion charges. Your thoughts? Well, um, once again, thank you for the opportunity. Good morning to you and good morning to my colleagues and good morning to our viewers out there, especially the very good And our listeners on radio. Yeah, on radio as well. And uh, especially the very good people of the Tamil North uh, constituency. Let me also send out congratulatory messages to all those who are contesting uh, for positions in the new regions uh, that have been created. Uh, the NDC is organizing uh, you know, regional elections mm. today to fill vacant positions as a result of the creation of the new region. So I want to congratulate all those who are contesting and wish them the very best of luck and also urge the delegates to choose with the party's uh, interests being foremost. Now to the uh, issue of the Office of Special Prosecutor in the first case that uh, we are told uh, the office is about to prosecute. I think, first of all, it's important to uh, acknowledge the fact that corruption is something that uh, has devastating consequences. And uh, we must all, at every point in time, be seen to be contributing to um, clamping down, clamping on down or fighting it. And I also agree that it doesn't matter how big or how small it is. Uh, corruption is corruption. And I have always uh, referenced the former. President Mohammed's uh, description of it as being mass murder uh, to make it, to make the point that indeed uh, you know some of the devastating consequences of corruption can be likened to mass yeah. murder because for example as a result of corruption if a hospital is not uh, provided in a community and uh, a nursing mother or a mother in uh, labor, labor loses their life I mean you cannot uh, you know countenance that so. Every move that is aimed at clamping down corruption must be supported. Now, so we had as one of our measures the Office of Special Prosecutor that was promised by the NPP in opposition and uh, you know, promoted when they won the last elections. As a member of parliament, I wasn't very um, keen, uh, to be honest, uh, about uh, you know, the bill that was in parliament because I was not really convinced if this office was going to do anything significantly different. You get the, the sense that it would the, be used as a, a tool uh, to chase political opponents or what? That was not even my initial thought. My, my initial thought was, uh, really, do we need another bureaucratic institution to fight corruption? What have we done when with we the already existing, had a justice system? What, what have we done with the existing structures that we already have? is have we exhausted possible means of using that structure to fight corruption? We have the legal system, we have the AG office, we have the, the uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the, there's a special prosecutor, maybe not a special prosecutor, but you have the prosecutor in there that works with the AG, you have Shraj, you have Yoko. So my question at the time, even as I followed the discussion on the floor to pass the OSP, uh, I mean, the OS, the Office of Special Prosecutor Bill, yeah. was really, do we need another bureaucracy, you know? So I was not very keen. That we then, could have appointed uh, the Special Prosecutor coming from, for example, the Attorney General's Office with designated responsibilities, exactly. and that will be it. Exactly. I was looking at what we can do with the existing infrastructure we already have for fighting corruption. We, can, we could give the Shraj more teeth 
for example, give it more resources. We could give Yoko, you know, some uh, more powers if they are lacking in that direction. Remember, I started as CEO's fraud office. We gave it more powers and made it Yoko. I mean, what's really, is it that the special prosecutor was going to do that we could not, you know, actually retool if necessary, the existing uh, offices to do? But then it was a campaign promise. It had to be, you know, fulfilled. And it was. Does it look like when you, your party comes back to power, you consider scrapping the office of the special prosecutor? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't speak for the party yeah. and and I, I I'm just telling you my views yeah. when when the thing yeah. came to, to, to but if you had your wish would you I wish want I wish, I wish you allow, allow me to this is yeah. just intro I mean yeah. this is not yeah. really yeah. substantial yeah, to I, the matter. I wanted to nail no, some I, I, of the issues I, 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 that I, 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 I we can invite <laughs> me one on one that's fine that. that's fine. this is this, this is that's just fine. for this that's discussion fine. you know so 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 the point the point I'm making is that that was my first you know uh, thought about this office then the commentary that followed the you know promotion of the bill mm -hmm. the subsequent passage of the bill and the appointment of a special prosecutor then convinced me that indeed the motive behind the setting up of this office was going to make it suffer the motive was clearly not that national in character what do you think was the motive for me, if you listen to the narrative that followed the promotion of the bill, the narrative that followed the passage of the bill, the narrative that followed the appointment of the smart, Mr. Martin Amidu, it did not engender this kind of national acceptability that I expected us to have of this office. If, for example, like I stated in the first place, the aim was to get everybody to contribute to fighting against corruption. There was no need to create a certain impression that I think was created, that this office was to target some people and go after them. And clearly, if you look at the literature, if you look at the news report, the articles, it's, it's, it is clear that maybe it may not have been the intention of the president who was the chief promoter, but clearly it was, you know, as if this office was coming to haunt some people, especially from the previous administration, who were perceived to have done some corrupt deals and had to be jailed. And so that is why, for example, you will have the special prosecutor under pressure today to perform. Because that level of expectation was created. And so you hear a lot of the NPP uh, 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 and government officials and sympathizers complaining about how the office it's not living up to expectation. It was through those complaints that Mr. Martin Amidu had to throw his hands in the air at some point and complain that he didn't have the resources. So quickly, maybe to feather that same perception, resources were provided and said, go to work like some, you know, bulldog. And when the resources were provided and action was not coming, you had the commentary again, the articles and the complaints, he's not doing anything. So it feeds into that perception, deliberate or not, but actions and inactions contributing to that perception that this is not really an institution set up to contribute to the fight against corruption generally, which must enjoy the support of all, if that is the need, I mean, if that is the intention, but to per persecute some people. So you had, for example, this week also very interesting things coming out from that office. First, there was the issue of, you know, fuel theft at the office, involving uh, uh, some people drawing fuel to the tune of our 750 Ghana cities a day, and people thought that was, you know, simply ridiculous. Some of them have come, you know, uh, to share other, the other side of the story, making the whole matter a bit murky, and you don't know who really uh, is handling what. Then, what it raised, I mean, the question it raised for me when I read the story was like, wow, is Martin Amidu corrupt? Yes, staff in his office are corrupt. Or they have been alleged to have corrupted, to have engaged themselves in corrupt act. But does that make Martin Amidu corrupt? And I, that question came to my mind because of the same mindset Martin Amidu had about people who were in charge and corrupt deals happen under them. So you, you can forgive me if I ask that yeah, question. Because if somebody was president, 
I mean, you're anything, making inference. Yes, so and anything right. that happened under that president, Mr. Martin Amidu thought was sanctioned by that president. Then the question you ask yourself is, when he is in charge of a small office, not a nation, and similar infractions happen, is it fair to assume that Charlie the man too is gone. not clean? That was what came to my mind. Then the issue of a lady who was supposed to have been a leak in his office and the person, I mean, for me, it was needless attention in the media. And anybody who has followed my position on Mr. Martin Amidu, especially, I mean, I told you I wasn't too keen about the special prosecutor bill, but I contributed to its passage. But when it came to Mr. Martin Amidu and the vetting process, anybody who has followed me can quite remember that I, I sincerely you know, stated that I didn't have confidence in Martin Amidu making any difference in the fight against corruption. Why? Because... And I stated it. Anybody can check online and you will find the reasons that I provided. Because I thought he was not going to the office with the right mindset. Oh. And I gave reasons. <laughs> no, I gave I, the I, reasons. You also stated that. Yes. I, didn't I, stated, I stated That's clearly. <laughs> I didn't go to. I stated clearly that That's he was true. qualified. <laughs> I thought he was qualified for the position. He had all that it took mm -hmm. to, to occupy that position. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that based on reasons that I provided, yeah. you know, quoting his own articles and even answers he gave out the vetting, that I didn't think he was going to office with the mindset, with the right mindset in the fight against what would anybody you have, who is what interested would you in that have article what would you can have read it. I cannot go into right, the details. What would you now, have considered to be the right mindset? You see, I remember I started by saying that corruption is devastating. The yeah. devastating effects of corruption is that consequential that we must all contribute to its fight. And we so, all agree that it's bad. We, yes, we but you see, agree. but you see, it is also, uh, 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 it also, it, it also can be used to pursue very uh, uh, parochial agenda. political interests that will not serve the general good of the people. And so, when I look at what is happening, for example, in the case of Mr. Mahama Yarga, I agree with Mr. Kwekubaku that you see, for me, it seems. There is some personal vendetta that Mr. Martin Amidu is pursuing, and I also agree Settle with lawyer score. Martin Settle Table scores. when he talks about when he talks about the expectation and the case that is going to court. You see, you couldn't have been part of a group of people who talked about millions and millions of dollars being embezzled and given the opportunity to prove yourself. You the first case you take to court. <laughs> didn't even happen under that administration. It happened under President Akufuado. If indeed it is a crime, it happened under Mr. Akufuado. So you couldn't have been part of a group that made so much noise about corruption under a certain regime, embezzlement of millions. And the first case that you take to court actually happened in 2017. 2017. And doesn't even amount to $100,000. It is not as if hundred thousand dollars is small. It is huge. <laughs> it is right. huge. It's not as if thirty thousand Ghana is even small. It's huge. But compared to the expectation that was created, I see it as an anticlimax. <clears throat> and again, you're looking at the issues, Mr. Mahama Yarga. In this country, the lawyers are here. I don't determine my tax liability when I'm importing a vehicle. I don't. Nobody does. It is the responsibility of a state institution to determine how much tax you pay. So if that was determined, and I was furnished with the records, and in the case of Mr. Mahama Yarga, he has stated so that he didn't even go to the port. He cleared the vehicles through an agent. The agent went to the port. The agent was told by the state institution how much tax is due. Is due. He gave the agent how much was required. The agent paid the tax. The agent was given a receipt. In this case, in this case, in this case, if you are even prosecuting anything, the lawyers are saying we are discussing the merits or otherwise of the case. No, we are not. Dis we, we are not. Dis we are discussing the the case as stated by Mr. Martin Amidu. And it, it, I'm just saying the case has been stated that this is what happened. It's not fair to Mr. Mama Yerga to just talk about. Uh, invasion of tax without, without stating the, the case. The State the case. Let people, as they are following the discussion, also make up their own minds even before the judgment. I am not going to ask anybody to think in any way. I'm just stating the fact that in this country, nobody imports a car and determines the tax liability on the car. 
State institutions are allowed to do that. The state institutions did that for Mahama Yaga. The arguments of whether there were some infractions and others, the legal things, can be raised in court. But I'm saying this is the case that Mr. Martin Amidu is taking to court. That Mr. Mahama Yaga brought in a car. He was told how much tax he should pay. He paid that. And later no, it was determined that he should have paid more, which he has paid. <laughs> It was determined that he should pay more, which he has actually paid more because, you see, he doesn't determine how much he's supposed to pay. So when he doesn't have any question about how much he's asked to pay, he pays. Or if he has an issue with it, he challenges it like all other institutions do. So that is the crux of the matter. And right. that is why I'm saying that for me, it's an anticlimax. But, uh, so Mr. You know, Martin, I'll, I'll switch to but I'm not, it, it may be just to state yeah. that. I feel very vindicated by what is happening by the Special <laughs> Prosecutor's Office. And if you read my article on why I, I wasn't very confident, confident on Mr. Martin. This Abidu, is it, right? You will understand. But I don't feel happy. I feel vindicated, but I don't feel happy. Because even in that article, I prayed that he will disappoint me. Unfortunately, he's not. Right. Uh, Richard Ayang, by your comments uh, on Mahama Yariga facing the Special Prosecutor in court. Well, <clears throat> very good morning to your good self and uh, my co-panelists here. Uh, I hope you give me the same amount of time that you gave on Rabu Saini. No, 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 no. This is just asking for fairness. Um, let me, first of all, uh, send some greetings to um, all the uh, Ghanaians who are watching us this morning, to His Excellency the President. And I uh, want to single out the good people of OT and uh, Volta region uh, this morning. Um, let me begin, because I don't know if we're going to talk about it, the, uh, the ascent to the... Uh, the right information bill. Yes, yes. We're not, we don't have that we on our have agenda that, this But it, it is key. I was, I was hoping that... Is it tied uh, to the Office of the Special Prosecutor? Absolutely key development uh, this week that I think that we should underscore. Because when you look at the journey of that particular law, uh, now law. But there are rumors that ministers are unwilling to release information, really, because uh, when they do, these could be used against them. No, here's the thing. The, the infrastructure for that is being set up. So the law will become effectual, I think, next, next year, year or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's lay the infrastructure and all the modalities put in place. I don't think any uh, minister would, because it's law. And if anybody uh, unreasonably seeking to obstruct your access to information uh, with that law in place, I think that there will be legal remedies. So that, that, that is the one thing that we, we can be assured of. But I wanted to uh, draw attention to that because when you look at the history, how this law has traveled and attempt by some to not do anything about it and the public mobilization, especially those of you in the media, to occasion its final passage uh, under uh, this president and finally uh, becoming law, I think is something that uh, all of us uh, should uh, be happy about because that was one thing uh, this administration or this uh, MPP government promised that we're going to do. And in spite of all the challenges and the difficulties, we have done it. And the cost involved to try to set up the infrastructure to make sure that, that the dream of people having access to information for whatever reason or whatever need they have for them is, uh, is realized. I think it's something that we need to commend this government uh, for having done for, for Ghana. Now, on the specific question of uh, Mr. Mahama Yariga, I, I would differ a little bit uh, to say that uh, corruption is not about sensationalism. It's about deterrence. It's about ensuring that we have a system that people can have confidence in. We have a system that is being uh, protective of the commonwealth of our country. Now, if it begins with an individual that is seen or perceived to have done something inappropriate, which resulted in uh, the loss of one CD, which legally he was not disposed to have earned, then it's important. So it's not about uh, the volume or the amount of money in question. Mm -hmm. It's about the, the act. It's about telling people that you cannot abuse the office. Because if you abuse your office to gain an advantage that calculates into 10 Ghana cities, you can equally abuse it to cause harm beyond that. 
So if it's a character issue we're trying to address, it's an institutional uh, you know, culture we're trying to establish. So it's not about where you start from and how big the amount is. You understand? We're looking at a space where we are doing things according but, but as Suhini said, I mean, the facts suggested that he was presented with the how much to pay he paid. And when there was demand for the difference, he paid that too. So why are we in court? Well, you know, we don't, we don't seem to think that Mr. Amidou didn't consider this. You understand? It is, you know, all of our, everything we've said, which was given him the respect as uh, a serious lawyer and a serious prosecutor. So I, I'm not going to answer that mm -hmm. question whether or not uh, this But there's also the question but of the value point, for money, how much it's costing to prosecute this and how much we I've already getting. underscored that for you. It's not about value for money. It's about ensuring that that culture does not uh, you know, prevail in our country. Because if we can deal with it, then it deters other people when they're going to uh, corrupt systems to mm -hmm. allow them gain advantages of one billion in all. That somebody did it for thirty thousand, and he was brought to book. So if I'm doing that much, I should rest assured I'll be I'll be brought to book. Now the the issue even is not the uh, the tax component of it. There is also an additional issue of breach of procurement rules. That I'm not sure why it's not being talked about uh, in procuring some ambulance for his uh, hospital in his constituency. That is a critical matter. Uh, what is the amount involved in that? Do we know? And if you know. From Bolga to Boko, you see the road? Yeah. Terrible road. I've been, just came back from uh, Dambai, roads that was constructed, the, the, uh, the things are degenerating, a wide need for infrastructure development. During a period of time, we're saying we're doing infrastructure, doing infrastructure. At the same time, people uh, were getting or doing things that contravene the very uh, processes we need to get resources or to economize our resources so we can move a step further to get these infrastructure needs addressed. So. It is a question that we must approach with all the seriousness it requires. I mean, in a, in a bucket of issues that are available for the special prosecutor to pick and take to court, you cannot pick all of them and send to court. So if you have a hundred cases and you pick one, let's not judge based on how how groundbreaking this one is or how you know uh, less groundbreaking another is. The key for me is to ensure that we in this country, we have ample evidence and seriousness, focus on the fact that if you break any rule in... But you do know that uh, Martin Amidou pursued uh, Woyome for the huge amounts we're chasing him for, that's big enough. So compared Woyome, for example, to uh, Mahama Yariga, it does support the argument that uh, Martin Amidou is actually uh, chasing small money with all the state resources. Mm -hmm. my, my, my brother, is he talk about Hmm. argument. I mean, I don't really see how that argument arises because if anything is tangential, the serious issue is that we want to fight corruption, are we? Is that our focus? Yes, we do. Okay, if that is our focus. I mean, I want to. Yes. The president so, has told us that he wants to exactly. in the setting up of the special prosecutor's office. Yes. But and then, the, the, and the, the, there are all sorts of issues uh, surrounding the setting up of the of the office. Uh, the opposition NDC has views that this is going to be used as a, a tool to persecute uh, political opponents. Did you expect anything different from the NDC? Well, I'm not sure you expect me to suggest. I mean, I'm just saying you've heard them. So no, no. But did you, you expect them not, to say anything different? You're not expecting them not to have a view. Well, they have a view, but if you, you see, when we're building a country, we can all have a view, but that view must lean forward. You understand? A view must lean we forward. We do expect yes. that the MPP but to it, prove them wrong. Well, uh, it's not about proving wrong or right. It is about building oh, a country. Oh, but it is. No, no, wait. Proving wait. wrong no, or no, right, no, no, it no, is. No, no, it's not. It's mm. not. You see, because if, if we get a motive right, and the motive is we are sharing ideas to build our country. Mm. So it's not about you sitting up in a situation. Because look, let me go back to uh, Honorable Suini's point to prove, uh, to answer your question. Now. He is talking about the, the genesis of the Office of Special Prosecutor. Huh? And the his bill came to, to power. Bill. Yes, yes. His opposition and his, his view on it, how we have gone past that. That's a retired argument. That's a retired position. You are in Parliament, you voted for the bill. The thing is law. Now we are moving forward. And you spend all this time trying to talk about something we dealt with? You understand? That is I don't the have kind the right. of. That, to talk about how I felt. That is the kind of position on. I am telling you that if we are building a country, then we're leaning forward, okay? Any law that comes out of parliament, okay, any bill that comes out of parliament dealt with and out there becomes the collective view of parliament. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? So when you are really litigating that as though what Parliament right, has sir. done... Mr. Is Mr. So Mr. Hiagra, I'm, not, I'm not cutting you, but okay. we'll take a break. I'll return to you and then you make that point. Uh, this is uh, Key Points and we're live on your TV, DSTV Channel 27 now. You can also hear us on Radio 3FM 92.7. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can still send us your WhatsApp messages. We'll share with the rest of the world. Please stay. All right, so this is still a uh, key point, and we still have uh, Hassan Suhini, a member of parliament for Tamale North, uh, Bernard Redu, who is a private legal practitioner, and Richard Ahiangba, who is an MPP communications team member, and uh, Martin Pebu, who is a private legal practitioner. Uh, Mr. Ahiangba was making his point earlier, but quickly before he continues, uh, your message is coming in. Good morning, TV3. It's a shame that an honorable member evading taxes. How does he want Ghana to develop? Uh, this is from David, uh, King David from Volta Region. And, uh, uh, Philip Abusa from Lejokuku says Amidu is pursuing a personal vendetta against Honorable Ayariga. He had petitioned from Tiger Eye Kopec against boss Ken Bond and all those involved uh, millions of dollars. Amidu should display and show some dignity to his office. And this one says uh, Lawyer Martin Pebu, correct for the points. You hit the nail on the head. Ayariga's case is too small such that we can use ADR or common sense to solve it. The salary of the special prosecutor benefited for doing nothing to the state is, is more the than the money he wants to collect from Ayariga. Thank you. And then the special prosecutor's office, uh, labeled as toothless dog by NDC, is ready to strike. And they're complaining again. But it is a fact that the MPP is far better in fighting corruption than the NDC. Uh, Nanado and MPP will, will condone any act of uh, corruption. Right, this is from Yahya uh, Chansa in Wa. Thank you very much. And Stephen, Martin Alamisi is being pressurized to prosecute. So most of the cases he has are merely suspicions. This is from uh, Paul Agboloso from Aflau. And uh, Farouk from Tema, you say that uh, Mr. Pebble's analysis about Mr. Ayariga's case is surprising. Then he might as well tell us who are paying 50 cities as tax for our business to stop paying since it is so minute when companies uh, which, when compared, I beg your pardon, with what MTN pays, uh, that's Farouk. And Kwame from Oyarifa says that when lawyers speak like how Martin spoke, then we should not look far why our judiciary is in such a shape. Where, so when Martin becomes the Attorney General, you can be corrupt, so long as the amount is not what he considers big enough. Oh, no, right. So that's your view, uh, Kwame uh, Oya, Oya, from Oyarifa. And uh, Irene Nikwe from La, you say that, TV3, uh, you're doing a great job. I think both past and present government systems are too corrupt. They come in with uh, promising long sentences, yet deliver pin, right? Uh, so that's your view. A lot more coming in, but uh, we'll read some of your messages much later. Let's get back to uh, Richard Ahiang. But Richard, I, I apologize that I cut your 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 views uh, short and went on a break, but it was necessary. So your view is that uh, this is a big deal, no matter how small the amount is, and no matter who is involved, and that beyond what we know, there are other elements of uh, pursuing uh, Mahama Yariga for the cost involved in procuring uh, ambulances also? Yes, the, the point I'm making is, and thank you again, uh, uh, the, the the point is the the pursuit of this case is not on account of uh, how much money is involved necessarily though that is important but the point is the principle okay and to uh, to establish that you cannot by virtue of the office you occupy mm, use it as a public official to misconduct to yourself. advantage yourself mm. in other words disadvantage the people you are supposed to serve so it's the principle underlining that is what we are interested in. So now people can debate the cost and make it look trivial, but we want to establish the culture that you as a public servant, you are inherently there to serve. That principle is at the heart of it, and we must pursue that. And I think that if we're being honest, if we're going to do any service to uh, our country and the, the money and the commitment we have made to that office to be successful, then we must focus on what matters. And that is the trying to root out of that mindset that I occupy this place so I can use it to advantage myself. And I think that we ought to really 
uh, commend the, the establishment of the office, and that was why I was trying to, uh, you know, refer to my brother's uh, discussion of the, the bill, the bill uh, instead as, of, uh, moving, uh, instead forward of with the moving forward and seeing what we can do. If there are big cases that you are interested, we're all able to but report he, he, to he, the. He made some very uh, key points about uh, the talking, fact. That, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Honourable Suhini, he made some key points suggesting that his view of disagreeing with the bill was because he thought that the existing institutions and infrastructure in place could have being used. Yoko was in place. Uh, Shraj could have been giving more teeth to bite rather than set up a new institution, Office of the Special Prosecutor. Go through all the motions and challenges of uh, logistics and then we're where we are and then Yoko is still there doing very little. I mean, I don't know whether that argument is valid or not. What we have today is the law. Okay? That argument, they had space for it in Parliament. Maybe he made it, but then the, the collective you know, will of Parliament was this is the way to go. And they have gone that way. So that is a, a you know a past debate to reignite this morning when we want to go forward. So you don't also you think that the Office of the Special Prosecutor is a tool to persecute political opponents? And I'm saying, who is, who is saying it? Is the NDC saying it? You don't expect any different from them. But I, I think that if the tables were turned and we have to look at this objectively from a national standpoint, are we interested in ensuring or are we happy that people called upon to serve this country, abuse their office for personal gain. Are we happy about that? And the answer is no. If we're not, and we're trying to figure out a way to discourage that behavior, then I'm happy about that. You understand? So that is a commitment I take. So if somebody else can argue it is about this, about that, but I am interested in what we are in, pub in the public space to do, and that is to serve our people. And we have seen over the years people abuse the office, they come not to serve the people, but to serve themselves. And if we have a president who says, let's put a stop to that, let's find a way to address that issue. Look, there is no silver bullet in addressing any public uh, you know, issue, you understand, in terms of making public policy to solve uh, collective problems. So you can, you can agree or disagree that, oh, we could have used the system already there, but what tells you that those systems, if they were working, why did we have all these problems before? You understand? So in moving forward, if you find a way to do it better, because that's why we have a new government mm -hmm. with new ideas to address the problems. If the problems went, they won't need that. So definitely that argument is gone. But the arguments have also been made that there are a lot of things that have happened, corrupt, mm -hmm. uh, perceived to be corrupt under the MPP within the span of time that they came into office, and none of that could qualify to be on the special prosecutor's agenda? Well, here's the thing. I, I, don't, I don't speak for the special prosecutor. Kelly GV for example. I mean, I don't know. I mean, that issue, those people who pushed it came back and retracted. Now, if the special prosecutor finds merit in whatever allegations were put forward, he will look into it. That's what I think we should approach this issue with. Uh, but the question really to say that it is as a political tool, I don't even see it. I think somebody was talking about uh, Mahama Yariga being brought because during the vetting of uh, uh, Mr. Abidu, there was they some, disagree. You know, they disagree. I mean, if, if you're talking about that, then right now we should have a case that has to do with the Honorable Harun Idrisu because he had a much more pronounced the, you know, back and forth with him during his vetting. You understand? So that tells you that that argument falls flat right. on the face. There is no merit in that. The only thing, uh, fortunately, that we need to look forward to as a people is that we have a system now that we all have to have confidence in that maybe the special prosecutor's office is what we've been looking for. Because all that we have, you can mention their names, Ioko, Shraj, and the rest of them. But the problem persists. You understand? So there's a new way forward. Let's support that. The only way the special prosecutor will succeed is if all of us support it. But if you have uh, a good chunk of the people, especially uh, starting with my honorable brother here, telling us he didn't believe in it to begin with, didn't have confidence in the person appointed, even though he's uh, uh, a fellow NDC member, and then for that matter, he doesn't think the office is going to be uh, successful, then that's how we undermine it, like we've undermined all the ones before. But I believe that under this president, all is going to be done to ensure that this office is successful because right. Ghana needs the special prosecutor to be right. successful. Right, uh, Mr. Richard, I heard, but let me quickly turn to Martin. Uh, Martin, you got a lot of the text messages suggesting that your views on uh, the fact that this sum was small is uh, not in good taste, just yeah. to put it in mild yeah. words. Yes, yeah. yeah, so of course, uh, so let me correct the impression. Obviously, the question to be was that 
was that a, the right way to start? And I'm saying that no. And I still stand by it. That is small. So my expectation was that for small cases like this, it will go to the ordinary police. Don't forget, I was just having a banter of Richard off camera. But like Richard is saying, these institutions have been proving themselves to have oh, been effective enough uh, Christ, in dealing with uh, in some of these no, issues. No, 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 that, Can that, you cite, for that, example, one successful corruption case the police pursued and won? Oh. How can we say that? Oh, so there, uh, uh, this is Rupert versus Salome, Ibrahim Adam, uh, Kwame Pepra, all those who are the previous NDC. No, no, no. Look, let's not count on such a statement, please. <laughs> but nobody he's asking you a question. No, he's saying that you have said that. No, 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 as far as I can remember, the reason we did this special prosecutor thing was to deal with grand corruption. Mm -hmm. When you go into the nomenclature of corruption, we have grand corruption and we have petty corruption. Mm -hmm. So 30,000 would petty. fall petty. No. You, Mr. Mm -hmm. Amidu, had said we have millions of dollars, millions, you see. So we expect that Mr. Amidu would deal with grand corruption. Please, and I'm not in, by any stretch of imagination Imputing saying that. Imputing that in this case is wrong. You no. Know, so what I, me I meant was that that one would go to the ordinary, the, the police, attorney general dealing with those mm. cases. You see, then let Mr. Amidu concentrate on grand corruption. No, no. You see, otherwise, then be before you know, we will inundate him with all the petty, petty corruption, and who is going to deal with the grand corruption? No one. Don't yes, eh? So let's concentrate. So, well, that's my opinion. You know, viewers also have their opinions, and that's a democracy. Now, let's come to the second uh, point that I want to have a, 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 just a brief bite at. The issue about creating the OSP. We all, look, I think that the o OSP creation was a brilliant idea. Look, Miss um, Auntie, you know that what happens is that the AG is overstretched. Last year, AG asked for 350 lawyers. AG was giving only 50. Only 50. But by the creation of the OSP, we've been able to uh, uh, what, allocate money to that office so we can get more lawyers and more uh, professionals, investigators, and all that forensics to help in the fight of crime. So you see that if you hadn't created this office, AG asked for uh, 350, was given only 50. Shraj, uh, Shraj said we're going to investigate, I think I remember from the budget, about 500 cases. Uh, well, I'm yet to see whether last year they got enough resources to do the 500, you see. So, and also looking at the stature of Mr. Amidu, you know, especially the number one thing that makes uh, his appointment brilliant, best, okay, is that that independence that he has. Mr. Amidu, you know, he had the, uh, what, the confrontation with the former president at our meals. He stood his ground. He was asked to apologize. It looks like he didn't. Then he was sacked. <laughs> so for somebody who, through his track record, he has shown that, look, mm -hmm. he'll be very independent, that is where we win the points. Well, so we mean, all can go yeah. to sleep knowing that, look, nobody can push Mr. Amidu around. Right. You see? So for me, any day, look. 300%, I will go with the creation of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Of course, that's not the first in our history. But you think his focus should be um, more on grand, grand corruption, corruption please, please, rather please. than the petty which, corruption. Which, right? which, Martin, which, I mean, let me get I, you. I still disagree with my limit brother. I mean, you shouldn't put a description on corrup uh, corruption. Or oh, it's it, not me. It is no, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. I mean, I'm coming. Or give it a color. You see, he understands in the scheme of things that. Prosecutors, lawyers, AG's department, the special prosecutor's office, don't just go to court. They will go to court when they've had enough evidence, enough information, and they say we are ready to prosecute this matter because of what we have had. We are here discussing this issue of special prosecutor, for me, because of the expectation we created as what was expected of the special prosecutor. But what was he supposed to do? He was supposed to investigate and prosecute crime. As to whatever crime it was, whether it was Ayariga, a MPP member, whoever, at this crime he was supposed to investigate and prosecute. So let's not live with this idea that he came with expectation of looking for some big wigs or some big corrupt practices to prosecute. The idea was that, okay, now he said it, I mean, and it's right, that the AG is overstretched. Sometimes we lawyers have questioned the independence of the AG. 
because we know that the Attorney General is always um, uh, uh, his, his, his counsel to the President. He interacts with the President. To some extent, the President could have some influence. And once he hurts that unit, he could also extend that influence. So we needed somebody who, to, our best, to the best of our knowledge, was independent, who would not be under the influence of either the President or any appointing authority. And this whole idea of special prosecutor came about. So if we believe in the independence of the special prosecutor, we should not create expectation for the special prosecutor and say that this particular crime is so small for you, go for this bigger one. If we do that, then we are losing the whole idea of independence of the special prosecutor. And we should not paint the picture as if uh, somebody is out there to probably identify and isolate people and prosecute them. The question we ask ourselves is that, what has this particular person done? Has he committed an offense? If he has committed an offense, has the special prosecutor powers to investigate a particular person? Yes. And prosecute, yes. So we are here because it's Mahama Yariga. But the question to ask is, what did he do? Was that act criminal? And why should it be the case that we believe that, OK, there are big I mean, cases and all that? The question is one about the independence of the special prosecutor, so that it won't be as if the AG is prosecuting Mahama Yariga, and we know probably the AG could be under the influence of the appointing authority. We have a certain independent-minded Martin Amidu doing this. So at least we can say he's insulated from all the perceptions of influence by the appointing authorities. So I would say we should allow the man to go about to his go job. About his As job. to who he decides to put before the court, that is why we thought he's independent enough. Because this whole idea of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, one major thing that came with it was the independence of such a person. And if we have somebody as Martin Amidu, whom we all believe cannot come under the influence of any appointing authority to decide that, I will go with um, Ayari Gaffes. Let it be. Let's allow him. Because to come here and say that, why are you going after Ayari Ga and not my brother Martin or Honorable, I mean, that would be trying to sort of um, uh, 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 losing or probably reduce that level of independence associated with him. Because you are telling him that, to our minds, this is the best person. So you are rather suggesting to him that he should go with this. Where well, lies his independence then? Uh, he needs feedback. No, you but, see, but, 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 but you, you do know that feedback. when uh, Martin Amidu yeah. was going <laughs> after <laughs> Warrior Man, mm -hmm. he had... Uh, yes, a lot of exactly. huge public sympathy mm, because yes. everybody knew yeah. that there was a huge amount of money involved. But yes. we're not getting that euphoria mm. with uh, yeah. ma the ma <laughs> Mahama You, you case. see, <laughs> let, let me be very <laughs> honest with you. I would say that, I mean, going after Yariga because of the personal banter with him mm. probably is not the best. But the question to ask is... But you have already said Ayariga is a big fish. Yes, the question to ask is, what did he do? And I will always maintain that if the special prosecutor could go after Ayariga, then you could go after if anyone. you're DC at the Nchembo district, then you should be careful. Because this is Mahama Ayariga right. we are talking uh, about. I'm and afraid, for me, that's the I'm afraid, Mr. Ray, we'll take a very quick break. Uh, my producers want me to go. And we'll come back and okay. get your views. Uh, this is uh, Key Points. Please stay. Right, so I wish we could have an hour more uh, to do the discussions, uh, but our time is running out. Uh, Honorable Suhini, I'll give you uh, some time to respond to all the issues that have gone on, very briefly. Well, um, I'll try to be very brief. My brother, when he started his submission, talked about the uh, significance of the RTI bill. I'm a journalist at heart and uh, haven't worked with information all my uh, adult life. I can't but support the uh, notion that uh, the passage of the right to information bill and the present ascension uh, to it is something that is commendable. What is, however, sad is the fact that at the time that the president is doing this, uh, he seemed to be blind to uh, institutions of state working under his authority uh, to clamp down uh, a number of media houses. Uh, You're making reference just, to the closure of Radio Gold, Radio Gold and XYZ, Nantambu, and many other stations across the country. And this same week, uh, you know, staff <coughs> and sympathizers of those stations embarked on a demonstration to register their displeasure. So I think uh, it is really, um, if you like, it is contrasting. Mm -hmm. You know, here you are giving with the left and taking with the right. I don't think it is very uh, consistent of what we want as a democracy. Then. Um, if you look at the 
creation of the OSP. Yes, I agree that the debate over whether uh, it was necessary or not is moot mm -hmm. at this point. But it does not bar me from still stating my views uh, as at the time that it was being created. Mm -hmm. And I am entitled to that and I'll state so uh, any day uh, on any platform right. that I have. I think that uh, if the motives that you know, uh, 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 led to the setting up were right, we would have had better than we are currently getting. It would have had a more nationalistic outlook and uh, support. And I'm sure we would have had better than uh, we currently are having. But when you talk about uh, grand and petty corruption, we have to understand uh, the point that I think Lloyd Martin Pebu is making, which I, I completely associate myself with. You don't have to look at this prosecution in isolation of the context within which the Office of was Special Prosecutor was set up. The expectation that the office was going for grand corruption is not being set by us. It's cast in law. It is cast in law that it is going for big things mm -hmm. and supported by even the promoters mm -hmm. of this law by, by, the, by the utterances that they made. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a case of tax evasion, you know, that currently is being handled by the GRE, Ghana Revenue Authority. In fact, even our courts, our Chief Justice has found it necessary to set up special courts Revenue for the GRE courts. to prosecute cases of this nature. To be the first case that the special prosecutor takes, it is an anticlimax and it has to be accepted as such. It is not to say that 30,000 Ghana cities or it's dollars small. is you, small. You, it is not point. to say yeah. corruption, you know, uh, 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 is, and, and when you talk about the concept of first among equals, I mean, uh, Loreku talks about the fact that Ayarga is a big person. Yes, that is that makes him first. But you see, you also look at the amount. Is it the biggest that we have been told have existed? Mm -hmm. So if you have a big man, big case, you get the right, necessary uh, ingredients. I just, I just, I just, yeah. I just, I just, I just would plead with you so that I land on 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 uh, uh, the issue of first. We don't have much was. time. We have less than. <laughs> I, 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 wish, yeah. I wish you gave me more time to look at this. But you see, I talked about the context. Look, it is either this current government in opposition lied to the people of Ghana about the grand corruption that the previous government engaged in, or Mr. Martin Amidu is simply clueless. It is one of the two. Right, uh, Either they lied that point is about well. the huge corruption cases that they said they were going to come and prosecute, or Mr. Martin Amidu is clueless. Mr. It's supposed to be I one have, of the I'll two. I'll take your quick reaction to that. Because, you see, this we'll, case happened we'll in 2017. We'll wrapping up. Thank this you. one happened in 2017. Uh, Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, from him, Thank you uh, very, very kindly. Mm. You, know, you know what makes one to describe the special prosecutor as clueless? It is the feeling that they cannot claim political witch hunt. What the NDC wanted, hmm, what my honorable brother wanted, was corruption under their regime or any amount of corruption in this country being pursued by the Attorney General's department. So they can link it and say this is MPP political witch hunt. Okay? But the fact that we have created an independent office hmm, appointed an independent-minded person who is of their cut. They are confounded. The only thing now is to attack the individual, to characterize the case that is brought leg legitimately, the appearance of an individual having corrupted himself, abused an office. They are now defining the thing to be too small, big fish, small fish. We see, are interested see, in fighting and so corruption. When you, when you categorically say so, he's a, he so abuses please, you've office. had your time to no, speak. But, I'm, but I'm, I'm see, mindful. I'm mindful. I know the case is in court. I, I, I don't say he abuses office. You're going on about the NDC making these views. But lawyer Martin Pepo has also made the same view that this is this is the grand corruption. Please allow me. I'm mindful the case is in court. Okay, so I'm not here just to take that. Honorable, please, please allow me. You have no, passed. no, I, please. You are, are you, you are not here to correct. I, I'm mindful the case is in court. Say he's abused his office. Please, you, you call people clueless. You, you mention bulldog here. Nobody corrected you or say anything. So what I'm trying to say, allow me to say, you had your chance, I didn't interrupt. Now the point I'm trying to make is this: there is a desperation to attack that office because now they cannot say the MPP is going after NDC. 
That's the problem. But, but I am, as a Ghanaian, I am a Ghanaian, I am interested, and I've actually underscored that for you earlier, I am interested in our resources being dissipated by people who think they have advantage and are abusing it. And we have a president, long before he was sworn in, says that his primary preoccupation is to ensure that the public purse is protected. And he's going to do so in the interest of the people of this right, country. Uh, so please, I am, I am trying to say that be it small or big, the principle we are trying to establish is that as a public servant, you cannot abuse and, uh, we that must, privilege. We must all support, we must the, office all of support the office of a special prosecutor right, it's not to be successful. Isn't, isn't not time for us to wrap up. And thank you very much, all of you. Those who sent your messages. Right, uh, final <laughs> one. You say that crime is crime, no matter how small it is. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, TV3 and your viewers across the length and breadth, the NDC, for some time now, has been complaining and crying of the dormancy of the special prosecutor. Now, he has started work, uh, which he's paid for. And the NDC should do the nation a favor by allowing the institution to fully operate. This is from Al Haji Impueni Ibn Abiziman from WA. And uh, more of your messages. Uh, Super Ya yeah, Ofori Jr. from Impoho says TV3, though all the three allegations made by the special prosecutor against Mahama Yariga are not legitimate and justifiable. But the third point doesn't carry weight at all. At all. Thank you very much uh, for your time. This has been Hot Edition. I'm Stephen Enti, and I'm great to Al Hassan Suhini, MP for uh, Tamale North, and then uh, Bernard Oredu, legal practitioner, and Richard Ahiagba, MPP communications person, and uh, Martin Pebu, a private legal practitioner. Thanks for your time, and those of you who listen to us on radio, thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.